Can I uh, call the meeting to uh, order here? Can we have a, a motion, please? A motion to open the meeting. Second. There we go. Thank you so much. And thank you. And uh, how about a roll call? Who wants to start? Janet Burley. Rita Hare. Ted Vincent. Kim Dushaw. Jennifer Hoffer. Patrice Russo. All right. Thank you, everybody. Wonderful. Uh, everybody got a copy of the November 17th uh, minutes in front of them? Yes. <clears throat> you guys can just take a look at that. If anybody has any comments or anything they'd like to add to the minutes, uh, please let us know. Otherwise, I need a motion to accept them. I'll make a motion to accept them. I second them. <laughs> All right, wonderful. All right, Patrice, you have the floor. Report on bills and vouchers. So the only thing that uh, we've had is a phone bill and some cleaning supplies under our general council on aging uh, budget. We did the brains and balance mm -hmm. class uh, was funded by the cultural council for the first two rounds of it. Then we used uh, grant money for the second round. So um, that's all we've had on that um, for uh, bills. Just generic, we're not really spending much just cleaning supplies and our regular utility stuff. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. How about any updates on the grants? So we have received the Cultural Council grants. They allowed us $1,500 again this year, super generous. We're really excited about it. I'm hoping that we'll be able to use it for regular programs as opposed to virtual, but at least we have the funding. And uh, that's all very, very helpful when we're trying to plan programs because you know we're so limited um, in what we have for funds. Yeah. So um, the state grant finally came in. It was odd because we usually write the grant on the programs that we're gonna do. This year, they had us do our annual report and then just make like a little bit of a statement as to what we were doing during these times, how our center was living, you know, what kinds of programs we were having and what kinds of things people were participating in. So we did get that for $12,972. It was level funded from still the federal census from, I don't even know what year it was. And now they um, just funded it for this year. So I will have um, a pretty good amount of the grant left over because Jennifer um, was put on last year um, onto my regular budget as my part-time employee. So I'm not using the, um, the grant for that. And um, we haven't had we're losing her. programs and all kinds of other things. So I'm working now on trying to <laughs> use the funds um, to put in a scanning system, my senior center scanning system which will be super helpful because we still hand count all of our people, programs, statistics. So um, that's what I'm planning on using the rest of the grant for this spring. It runs about seven or $8,000. And then it's about a thousand to $1,500 each to maintain. So I figure um, that will be a good use of the funds um, that will be left over probably in the spring because I, I won't be having that Tai Chi and Zumba and all the other exercise programs that we currently pay for under the grant. So that's where we're at with all of those. Okay. Good, good, good. And the holiday meals program? The holiday meals program was spectacular. We had sent out on Facebook um, and put up a little sign. We had put a basket outside. If anybody would drop off certain items, they called in advance if they were dropping off turkeys they did stuffing. We did uh, stuffing, vegetables, cranberry sauce, gravy, and uh, Table Talk donated 80 pies for Thanksgiving. So all the food that was made for the Thanksgiving meals, I think we made 65 of them, was um, volunteers deliver them. And that was all provided by volunteers from uh, donations from the people in town. And uh, we did have some businesses that made some monetary mm. donations that went through the Sunshine Club. And um, they purchased gift cards for us to be able to use to buy the hams and the turkeys. So at um, Christmas time, we did a ham dinner and a Christmas dinner. And we did 120 of those. 
Um, and that was all through the leftover food donations from the Thanksgiving. Table Talk donated another 80 pies. Uh, Paul Boudiette donated cases of uh, KN95s and regular uh, packets of face masks that were individually wrapped for our seniors. Uh, Lisa Posmer over in Christine Ferno's office made stockings with candy. Uh, the little dancers over at Dance Sensation made cute little ornaments. Uh, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Uh, the school made uh, cards for everybody. So it was really, really nice. We put together a really nice meal and a really nice basket for all of the uh, seniors that signed up for the holiday meal. So people were super generous. I think we had a couple of thousand dollars worth of uh, donations that came from businesses and residents. So it was really a spectacular event the way that the community came together for the Good. seniors and has continued to do so since we started meals last April. I mean, our donation account paid for a good amount of the meals along with some CARES Act money. So we were really, really fortunate um, to have such a nice community that came together, even though everybody was hurting, they really helped the seniors a lot. So we really appreciated it. And it, it went off without a hitch. And the meals were delicious. Is, it, is anybody else having a problem hearing Patrice? I'm not. No. No. No, it must be me. All right. I can, she breaks up a lot where I am, I guess. Okay. As long as you guys can hear her, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there, Patrice? I am here. Okay. Now you're here. All right. Good. Good. So I got, mo I got most of the meal program. I got most of the hot donations. That was wonderful to hear everybody donated for the holiday meals. So, um, anything you want to add to, about the meal program that I might have missed or? Yep. So we started again on January 5th, after the holidays, we started doing our regular, our regular meals. Again, we're preparing them currently out of the senior center. Mm -hmm. They're using donation, uh, money that has been sitting in our account, um, or has been replenished because people have still donated, um, to be able to purchase the food. I purchased it through Thurston and then. Mm -hmm. I use the, uh, the Visa cards from the Sunshine Club to kind of piecemeal different things. And we do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We do a breakfast and a lunch. Mm -hmm. It's drive-by. And then Jennifer delivers to um, some of the people that can't come and pick up their meals themselves. So that's been very successful. We're going to continue that through March um, and maybe through the beginning of April. We had thought about an April like kind of first stop date, but now even though people are getting vaccinated, you're seeing all these variants coming out. So the CDC seems to be warning against those and the, the reason for the meal program was to help people that couldn't get out and about themselves um, or that didn't want to go out and about mm -hmm. to the grocery stores. So next week um, we are going to start doing um, two meals on each pickup. So on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, they'll, eat, they'll get two meals each. Um, because I do have a, a significant amount of donation money that's been allocated just for this program. And I don't want to see it sit there and not be used when we stop the meals. Um, so okay. we're going to, we're going to continue for now and just kind of see how it goes. The only problem is um, that we received um, money from my mind is blocked right now. I can't even think of Ken. Capital. It was from capital. So we, we did receive the, the money from um, for the flooring and for the asbestos removal. Mm -hmm. So that has been approved. And I'm in the middle of getting asbestos um, estimates now. I have to have quite a few of those. I'm yeah. reaching out to the carpet people to get another set of estimates because, of course, it's now a new year. So I don't know about pricing. Um, and I really hope to be able to close down at the middle of April for that few weeks to be able to get everything done, get everything back in because I'd like to be able to start our podiatry clinic again and our blood yeah. pressure clinic again, at least in May. Yeah. So, um, that's so the doing the meals, we wouldn't be able to do that unless we move to a, a different location, which would be a tremendous amount of um, taking everything out of the center. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's pretty full down there with uh, all the meals prep stuff. So I'm kind of just going with it. For now and we'll see oh, okay and and on the asbestos removal that's only the uh the floor the old floor tiles right correct yeah that's a pretty easy job when they get to go and do that okay yep that's not too bad no, would they be do 
great movie. Would you would you have him do it? Would you have a plan to have him do it nights or weekends or something? Or so we're still closed. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that they'll just come in and just work full on. Yeah. Just rip up the carpet, get all of that done. Everything has to be moved out of the center into pods into the parking lot. Oh boy. So yeah. every all the contents have to be removed. So once mm -hmm. all of the contents are removed, which could take a day or more, um, mm -hmm. we'll come in, rip everything up. It'll be easy breezy for the carpet to be laid once the floors to be laid once that happens because we're gonna go with carpet squares. Um, so those are easy. If something happens, we can rip one up. They used them at the library. And um, if we get a stain or if one gets tattered, we can we can rip it up and then we're going with flooring for the rest of it. So the flooring will only get probably gonna take about two days or so. Mm -hmm. And then everything has to be moved back into the center and set back up again. So I'm thinking the whole process could take anywhere from two to three weeks. Okay. So, and then we'll be back in business. So by the time we ever get to open again, which I hope will be a little bit maybe into the summer doing smaller groups multiple times a day. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to, to have some of the little programs in smaller groups, that's all. In the Good. main room, because that's the only room we'd be able to mask and social distancing, you know? Yeah, yeah, well, okay. Well, I guess uh, update on uh, this ever-changing uh, clinics and what's going on there with vaccination appointments. Uh, being a Excuse me, Patrice. Yes. This is Janet. Hi, Janet. I finally got through. Okay, good. Oh, thank you, Janet. Good. <laughs> so um, the vaccines, the way that the state put everything on their website, it was called your COA. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have a master list. Uh, last spring when everything started to happen, our town administrator encouraged us to create a master list. We did with every single solitary senior. Uh, Christine has a list of every senior that by age, address, phone number. We reached out with the library and a couple of the other town hall employees and we created this tremendous list. I have it right down to age groups, 60 to 65, 70 to 75, 75 and older. We updated the, Jennifer updated the list uh, throughout the summer if anybody moved, if anybody had passed away, if we didn't have a correct phone number for them. Um, so we did have this list, which was very easy to go through. So um, Jennifer and Sandy and I just did like the whole seven day a week from sun up till sundown to call every single solitary senior when we thought there was gonna be an Uxbridge site to see how many people wanted to be signed into that system. We did that. And then we found out that Uxbridge site wasn't really gonna happen immediately. And when it did, it would only have a hundred vaccines and approximately three or four other towns mingling in with us. So we started to see that Harrington was opening up appointments and uh, Southbridge and other places around. So we started hand calling all of the seniors and we got about 146 of them booked into appointments around certain areas. The only problem is Milford Hospital requires you to have an email address that you can only use once. CVS requires you mm. to have a social security number, which we tell our seniors, if somebody calls you, don't give them that information. So that was a terrible, you know, then Walgreens, yeah. you have to sign in and create an account for each individual person and they have to have an email address and it's the same with Price Chopper. So the whole other than getting everybody that we got in really to Harrington, a few to CVS and a few to Milford, it was easier to go into Harrington because you're sitting with your spreadsheet, you have their address, you have their name, you have their date of birth, you book the appointment and it goes on. These sites were crashed. We were having great success and then they decided they were gonna open it up to the 65 and older, which left us completely out of the loop because all these tech savvy people are now signing in to get their vaccine. And the sites are crashing. Mm within four minutes of them opening on Thursday mornings. So I had a meeting with, um, I had reached out to Representative Kenner and uh, his assistant, Lori, and he set up a meeting with the senators a couple of Fridays ago and some of the COA directors to be able to say, you're advising people to go to us, but you're not giving us any tools to help them. Hmm. We have no individual sign in place that we can go. You're not sending them to senior centers, the vaccines, and we're very well equipped. We do flu, flu shots, we do study first, we do blood pressure clinics. I mean, it's not rocket science. If we can just get a pharmacist out there with one of the 
maybe the Moderna or even the Johnson and Johnson would be great, then we could inoculate quite a few people. And so yeah. it was, they understood our frustration, but yet again, they want all these people to go to the mass vaccination sites. So we called everybody, we've been, we were inundated with phone calls. I mean, on a, on a regular day, we get maybe five to 15 calls. We're getting 50 or 60, 25 or 30, 40 calls every day, seeing where they are on the list and so on. So we explained to them that they have families or if they have a friend that's computer savvy to assist them. We're going through our list according to age. So we're going oldest to youngest. Um, and you know we're really trying hard. And then we have the cluster of, if you bring a buddy, you can get a shot. So then we had everybody calling us to say, can you hook me up with the seniors so I can get my vaccine? Which mm. it doesn't really work that way because you have to be gory checked. We can't recommend that somebody gets in a vehicle with somebody they don't know. It is yeah. you've been in your house for a year and now you're getting in a car with a stranger. Absolutely. And have volunteer insurance within the town to cover any of this. So they have kind of, as I say, the state has had their cart before they horse the whole time. Yeah. And instead of reaching out to the very people who are servicing the needs of these elderly, they just put us on their website and would like have at it. So we're hoping this week and in the coming weeks that Milford and Harrington will open back up again because now they're doing their second round of vaccines and they haven't been getting any. Mm. So it's, it's been uh, pretty much a nightmare, but I'm, I'm still pressing our uh, pharmacist and hoping that when they do get the J&J, which should have been allocated for these specific, it shouldn't go to a max vaccination site. It should go to homebound people, VNAs. Yeah places where we don't have to worry about storing it. So I'm hoping that that's what they do, but it's probably doubtful since they're filled in every other way. Yeah, because we have to, I mean, we have to understand a lot of these elderly are shut-ins and right. they don't have transportation. I'm a, I'm a firm, firm advocate, and I've said this quite often publicly to many people I've talked to, is we really need rolling vaccination units, um, whether it be the local fire department, EMT, volunteers, local nurses, just yep. go town to town, you know, set it up and go home to home, get these homebound folks vaccinated. Yep. Um, it's unfortunate the road we've gone down with this. Uh, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, I went on to spiel to say, you know, this is such a forgotten generation. It's like fend for yourself. Survival. Yeah. I have 90 year old people that have fought for our wars that are sitting in their house <laughs> and they can't even get a vaccine. You know what I mean? It's, I it's frustrating. And um, so we're doing the best we can fielding all the calls and um, we have a spreadsheet that's perfect. So as soon as we can get people in, we will uh, be putting them in as quick as we can get them in. And then people mm -hmm. are calling us, telling us that they've gotten booked at other places, uh, which is good. So we're taking them off our list and then somebody else goes up on the list. Ooh. I'm hoping in the next month or so that things will kind of clear up a little bit. There might be a little bit more uh, spaces for people to, be able to get a vaccine that are more local to them. Chief, do you have any updates from the, um, the Board of Health, that multi-town vaccination clinic that's supposed to happen? No, I think the only thing that they're trying to do is get more towns in so they can make themselves a mass vaccination site. But uh, quite honestly, uh, I'm not all that hopeful about it. <laughs> Kent, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I did I know, see the news uh, where a lot of um, fire departments are doing it now too, doing vaccines. Yeah, there are some fire departments that are doing it. I don't yeah. know how they've done it. If it maybe their board of health was on board early or what, but um, I, I don't know of any departments in the in the District Seven area where we are that are doing it, to my knowledge. Yeah, they they the fire departments uh, and you know, a lot of local senior centers. They they had they did get some allotment of vaccines, but they were told by the state to pretty much shut down by March first because they really want to go to these mass vaccination sites. That's where they want everybody, which is unfortunate. That when I was on the um, the call with the senators, there was uh, two um, COAs that had their first vaccination clinic. And they weren't guaranteed to get the second vaccination. They would have to go to the mass vaccination site to get it. So the problem with the mass vaccination sites is they uh, apparently make sure appointment when you leave. But if you go to Springfield or Doubletree or Natick Mall or any of those, 
you have to go back on and sign up for a second vaccine. Yeah, and then who's to say if you got Moderna on the first shot, uh, you're going to find Moderna somewhere else or by, vice versa with Pfizer. I mean, you got to match up the second shot with what you got first. So you can't uh, interchange the, either one of those drugs. So it's nope. definitely a problem. Yes. So I, um, I hope that something will get straightened out. I mean, I know um, the chiefs all wrote a letter that was sent out to Secretary Sutter's. Yes, I saw that. And the COA, Mass Council on Aging, all of them are constantly just explaining to the government this is what's going on. It's falling on deaf ears because nobody seems to be responding. Do you get mm. a response, Chief, for your letter that was sent out? I haven't got any response as of yet. It's politicians that are doing the responding, too, by the way. You really want to believe what they say? Right, right. <laughs> you got a point. <laughs> really? I got a response from from um, Representative McKenna, who you know assured me he's working to get the site in Uxbridge open, and that the biggest problem still remains supply from the federal government. It's like okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he's um, he has been very helpful. He he yeah. has set up quite a uh, he has responded to some of my seniors that have written uh, emails to him and to uh, Senator Fatman. And he yep. is trying very hard in the same, I had uh, a conversation with him and he was at a meeting and he was able to put in a question. And um, he just said that he had an irate senior center director and she wanted to know what we were gonna do about X, Y, and Z. And he did get a response saying that they are working on it. But yep. that was a couple of weeks ago and then they, you know. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a mess of proportion. There's only so much they can do. It's the, really the administration and you know, and then we'll the circle back to that in a couple of weeks. We'll reach out to you in a couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. 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 Yep. It's sad because you're looking at the fact that what 80% of the people or more that have died or gotten truly, truly sick from mm. this is the elderly. And absolutely. Right. We're in the meetings back in the fall when we got that playbook from the federal government and from the state, we were talking about how it should be should be done. Okay, for your first responders, of course, your nursing homes, your PCA, CNAs, all of that. And then it should have just been seniors across the board. And they just keep skipping around. It's like, okay, we have half the population done, so let's move on to the next group. Well, as you're moving on to these groups of 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 year old people who probably are not gonna have any terminal effects from this disease, what happens to your 90 year old that's been in the house for you? Yeah. Right. You know, yeah, they fall through the cracks, which is sad. They do. It's a forgotten yeah. generation. I've been saying it for years. I the yeah. way that the elderly are treated in this country, they should be first. I agree. I yep. agree. 100%. They opened it up to 65 and older, and to those of us that are immunocompromised, way too fast. And now they're already talking about opening it up to teachers. And I'm thinking there's not enough appointments for the people who you already have in the system. Right. Why would you add more to a, a system mm -hmm. that's already straining? Are you well, trying I to believe break the it? teachers should be getting it. I think because I know someone that's a teacher that got it from a student. So I do believe teachers should get the vaccine. Oh, I believe they should get it too. My my thing is that they've already opened it up for so many people already that there aren't enough appointments out there that adding more people to that system is just going to make it break yeah. rather than trying to get through getting finding more vaccine for the from the Johnson and Johnson to get more vaccines out there to the people that are on the list now and then put teachers at the very next installment. Well, if prisoners can get it before teachers and everybody else, there's a problem there somewhere. If who can? Well, the problem is all the kids prisoners. are asymptomatic, so they're the oh, ones so, passing yeah. it on. Yeah, I agree with you, Ken. Yeah, the, the young yeah. kids are already so uh, forty percent of the. Young so if you're going to if you're going to open the schools again, the union is going to require that you vaccinate the teachers. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think and, the political pressure that's driving each age group. So yeah. while they were vaccinating the seniors, it was all the baby boomers that said, I want my vaccine. Now it's the teachers that are saying the unions and all of those. So they're just like they're opening up so many things so quick. And the CDC is saying, don't do it, but they're doing it anyway. Right. Right. So I think- What happened to the plan? Someone explained to me 
What happened to the plan that it was going to be the first responders, the people in the nursing homes, and then everyone over 65? Why did that change? Again, the government changed. In my well, opinion, it's because they assigned it to the Board of Health, who does not do this for a living. Yeah. Many towns uh, don't have a functioning Board of Health. So I can, I can give you an update on, on the nursing home side, congregate living side, assisted living. So as of March 1st, all nursing homes in Massachusetts, assisted living, and almost all congregate living rest homes have all gotten their second vaccine. So nursing homes, all those folks are now done. The, the, the problem good. now is it's basically a supply and demand. You only have so much supply of the vaccine. By going and opening up to more groups, you create too much demand for the supply. And that's what's happening. It's really, we need mm -hmm. to, you know, before we move on to the next group, you got to make sure that the first group is all taken care of that we're not doing. Right. I know that um, the senior housings have been done also, like Riddlebrook was done. They've already had their second shot. They're a couple of weeks out from it. So that was good that at least all the senior housing was also included in that congregate setting. Yeah, so definitely. That's a, a big relief. Well, yeah, I mean, there is some positive news out of this, but it's, it's you know, until we have enough supply, we can't create demand uh, right now. We have to wait until we, once again, we do this, the set of people that are eligible now, get them done, then move to the next. It just doesn't seem to be a strategy or a plan. It's just sort of like they're throwing stuff out there. It's one of those, it's like one of those things, you got to think three or four moves down the chessboard, yeah. not just my next move. And that's what they're yeah. doing. They just, and yeah. it's, well, mess things all up. And being in healthcare like you, we all understand how the how the ball rolls, as they say. And uh, you know, this whole pandemic probably could have been dealt with a little differently from the beginning. But correct, you know, we roll we, we roll with the punches. What can we do? Yeah. they did the best they could. They knew didn't know anything about it, so there's yeah. only so much they could have done at the beginning. And yeah. I believe that when the beginning came, the it was taken care of of what they knew about it. Well, I guess I guess I can say to everybody is stay tuned. Every day uh, brings right. new information. Um, exactly. We'll go from there. Any other business anybody wants to bring up? I have. Um, Sandy is going to be. It was. We had talked about it last year. She's going to be going part time. She's okay. going to. She's doing nineteen hours a week. She's going to be going down to fifteen hours a week. I am oh. working on a new job description to. Be able to, Jennifer will be taking over the 19 hour week position. Um, okay. I'm working on a new job description I'm going to send over to the town administrator today um, because I'm going to try to, I'm going to cross train Jennifer in um, outreach. Because oh. I do believe now, again, like Ken said, all these chess moves, the domino effect of everything that has happened because of the pandemic is going to probably justify many people not going into nursing homes coming in the, the next few years because of fear that if you're in yeah. the nursing home, then you're not getting right. treated. So I think that that's going to be a, a really big um, homebound population is going to remain. Mm -hmm. home. I think their families are going to try to keep them home. So um, that being said, we have 2,071 seniors in town and like 800 of them are in that 70 plus uh, group. Um, she's going to cross train in outreach. She does have a really good background. She was a home health aide for like 20 years. And, um, so she can really gauge a situation when she walks into a home, she's very familiar with mandated reporting and all of those things. So I'm going to be cross training her and hope to get her to 24 to 25 hours, because when we do reopen, I want to do the Monday through Friday, nine to two, not the Monday through Thursday, nine to two. And then it's Friday mornings because if we're going to be having smaller groups multiple times a day, I'm going to need that extra five hour block in order to accommodate everybody. We might have to take the painting class and do two or three painting classes. You know, the osteo group might have to be just a few people in this room. Zumba probably won't happen. Tai Chi or yoga could happen, but I'm going to have to do smaller, smaller groups because our space is small in order to social distance. So I'm kind of trying to project what's going to happen in the next year or so. And, um, you know, Jennifer's a good fit for that position and I'm only one person. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, trying to do, do multiple jobs. I'll still oversee it. I will still do outreach. 
um, I will still keep my case low, but having somebody else in an emergency would be great because now if I'm on vacation, the, the fire chief is our outreach. <laughs> so yes. um, it all kind of makes sense. And, and we are busier than we've ever been. I, I don't think the senior center, myself and the staff have ever worked harder than we've worked in the last year. And mm -hmm. literally 12 hours, 24 hours, sometimes seven days a week, you know, most of the time, at least six to try to catch up on all of our other duties after we finish everything else. And, you know, it's been, you know, quite an experience and we're not complaining. We've enjoyed, you know, being able to take care of the elderly in town, but I'm really going to need somebody to be able to assist in other things when we get back to some kind of normalcy. So okay, yeah, I think Jennifer good. would be a good fit. Yes. Yep. She yeah. has a good amount of background with, uh, yeah. like I said, so doing outreach, um, you know, would be really, uh, really something she could handle effortlessly. So absolutely. Yep. That's wow. great. Yep. Good. Good. Any well, other business? That's all I have. Anybody else? So the walls have retired from the board. Yes. We do have an opening. Um, Jim Dusham is currently our alternate. So he needs to be put up to a full member, I believe that has to happen, Pat. Yep. Yep. Um, so um, how do we how do we go about that? Do we just uh, make a motion to um, to um, add him as a, a full time, you know, as a, as a board member instead of an alternate, and then he any uh, selectmen do their part? Um, I, the selectmen already have him down as an alternate, so I don't need. Well, I suppose I'll let Suzanne know. And then maybe they do have to approve it. Correct. Okay. I will. Um, that's if Jim would like to accept being a full member. Let's put Jim over. Okay. Does anybody want to make a motion to accept Jim as a as a board member instead of an alternate? So move. Really, I'll make a motion. Okay. Anybody else want to second? I will. Wonderful. All right. Great. That sounds good. Perfect. Right, Patrice. We're in search of one more board member and it needs to be a senior. Yeah. Yep. So what is a senior now? I'm, I just turned 55 yesterday. Does that make me uh, a senior? You're a, you're a junior. Yeah. Am I? Jeez. 60 or older is considered a senior in the state of Massachusetts. I don't know. I keep getting AARP invitations. It's kind of scary. <laughs> you get good discounts. Go for it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All my kids would laugh if I ever pulled out my ARP card at a restaurant or something. Oh, they be laugh of the day. You no, know, you tell them you're in college. I got to save a buck or two. This is the way to do it. <laughs> hey, I'm done. I'm done. My daughter graduates this May. I'm done. Oh, oh good for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of that business. Thank God. So that's a good thing. Um, so we got to pick a date for our next meeting. How is um, April? Sounds lovely, right? April 5th. Uh, no, April 6th. Would April 6th, Tuesday at 9 a.m. Is that okay with everybody? Good yeah, for me. Yeah. All, right. All right. Wonderful. Okay, so I guess we need a motion to adjourn, and we're good for the, for the day. Bye, everybody. Thank you. All right. we have a motion Take to adjourn? Yeah, I need one. <laughs> Quick. Motion, <laughs> to, motion adjourn. to adjourn. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Can't good talking to you. Okay. Good. Bye. 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 Bye.